All right, so I am making this video to kind of show you a little bit about what I've learned recently. It's and there's enough going on in Russian fishing for that, like there's always more to learn. Um, but this time around, some folks in my chat um, kind of gave me some pointers, and we figured out how to do um, how to use a basically use wacky rig to go for char here at um, Archie, Ladoga Archie. So um, I'm gonna show you a couple spots. And the first one is gonna be a spot that I actually haven't tried yet myself, which that's to say like right up here around the 25 meter hole. And this one, there has been some pretty good regular char caught. And the second spot I wanna show you is down here at the 14 meter hole. And this is actually where I have fished before, testing this technique a little bit. And in this spot, you should be able to catch regular char, but also some other things as well as gray char and red char. Hopefully we won't hit anything that uh, we're unable to get in. I guess you never know. So let's, let me just show you quickly the setups I'm using, and then I'll jump in the boat and, and I'll, um, miraculously bring you back once we're out over the first hole we're doing wacky rig obviously the first one we're doing is um, a light setup this is one of my favorite setups i own actually and it's the vexilar and the minister 2000 uh the minister 2000 just so you know it's a it's a great value definitely worth looking into but it is only available at least thus far at the new year's fair so you're not going to be able to find it right now uh, and the most comparable 2000 reel, I think it's just like way more expensive. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is the setup we're using. We are using rainbow braided line on both, and that's just so we can see exactly how far down our line is. And you'll see why that can be important in a minute. Uh, a 10 kilo, 60 centimeter liter on this one with a one knot hook and it weighs 2.28 grams in the water 2.5 grams i'm saying that out loud because i want to be able to get it again but i was just going to show you these are loaded hooks they come in different sizes and this is the one we're using this is a very large one so the bite rate on this setup is going to be slower but we're trying to get a bigger fish the second setup we're using is actually an ultralight, so not light, ultralight. You can see on this one, rainbow line again, but we're using a 7.4 liter. So you can catch Xander, other fish, on this wacky rig setup as well. It is possible we could hook into something we may not be able to reel in on this setup. We'll just see how it goes. Smaller hook size. This is the hook size you probably want to use to go for bite rate. You can still catch trophies on this hook size. This one is a large 2 and it's the 1.75 gram. Notice on both setups, the most active, seemingly most successful nasty worm right now is the 4.501, and that is a wacky, a wacky worm is the category that that falls into. All right, I'm gonna get out on the boat and I will bring you back as soon as we get out there on the open water. Okay, welcome back. So this is where we are. We've come to the first spot here. It is getting late in the afternoon. It's about 5 p.m. So we'll have a little bit of time here before overnight. I thought I would just go ahead and show you me the whole process from start to finish, trying to catch a fish with this technique. And then after that, I'll probably pause it and just bring you back when we have a decent fish on just to see some of the fish we're catching as to not make this an extremely long video. But I do want to make sure you see the technique first. So this is not trolling, and this is also not really straight spin fishing. This is more akin to perking like we do on the Norwegian Sea. So what I'm going to do is, here's the first setup once again. We've got, uh, got it on about 15 retrieval, I'm oh, sorry, friction break, full retrieval speed. I'm going to cast it out just slightly. And then I'm just going to put it down. Notice I didn't even close the bale, and that's just so that it'll keep, keep sinking. Once again, here's the other setup. And we're going to cast this out just like we did the other one and place it down. And 
And we see from looking on the map that we should be going down around 25 meters. That's one reason to use the rainbow line. It makes things easier. Not that you couldn't do it without it. But it just gives you a little more confidence that you know where you are. So we see we're at 25 meters. The line has stopped going down. So we can be pretty sure here that we're at or very close to the bottom. This one, same thing. We're now down approaching 25 meters. There's nothing super heavy on this line. So it, it does take a minute to drop down. You'll see when we're at 14 meter, which is right here, you can, you can really feel the difference in the two. Now, it's pretty basic, pretty easy here what we're gonna do at this point. We're gonna pick one up and we're gonna perk it by hitting the right mouse button and then set it back down. Do the same with this one. I don't have any sort of exact science here, but pretty much I wanna just wait a few seconds and then just do the exact same thing over again. Now, I really hope that after all this preamble and all this setup, that we do in fact catch a fish doing this. That would be pretty embarrassing if we don't. Last time we did it, this did work. So let's go ahead and just get some movement. Kind of like in the sea, a lot of times what we're doing is just trying to make sure that that lure is continuing to move around. Set that back down. Continue to check them. Now we're on the nice boat, not the cheap boat. So we can get up, we've got room to move around. We do have this to show us, which is kind of nice. This shows us how deep we are. Um, so that's, I guess, one advantage of the nice boat over the cheap boat. Last time I did use the cheap boat and People were getting onto me because we would have had more information about the depth of the water. That's probably a legit reason. Not only when we're going to this far away is it nice to have the faster boat, but also nice to have a little more information, I suppose. So I think if we don't have a bite here pretty soon, one thing I'm going to try to do is um, make sure that we're at the bottom sort of re-examine. See the line went out a good bit. We do get the touching bottom notification now, which you, which you don't always get. It's not very consistent in my experience, but just make sure both of these truly are at the bottom. Don't, rule, don't reel it in too much beyond the bottom. We'll just kind of Do this, get it moving, and then let it sit for a second. If it's a nice fish, or if it takes off a little bit, you'll see some, you know, see a little bend in the in the rod. But with these char, a lot of times you won't see much bend either. And remember this setup we have on the left side with the one knot hook. This is always going to be a slower bite than this one over here. Should do better. Although, I will say, we can pull it up this way. The, uh, where is it? Here, sorry. Yeah, that's obvious. This having the 60 centimeter leader on here also can slow the bite rate down. If you have a, a smaller leader, sometimes that helps with the bite rate as well, it seems like. Um, but I am starting out with 60 centimeter liters on both. We can make adjustments as we need to though. What my chat was telling me, the, the few people that had done this before, was that this week this is not the most active. Like there's times when this technique can go a lot better, can be a lot more active. And that you definitely like want to do it during those times because the XP you get per fish. But we should still be able to find a bite here. I'm kind of surprised we haven't yet. Maybe it's the time of day. Um, I mean, I think our location is fine. Okay, so you've seen the technique. Um, I will keep you updated as we do catch fish, though. 
Okay, well, first fish was actually, let's, see, let's drop our anchor here. I actually was moving the boat, oddly enough, and we got our first bite. It's been pretty slow so far. That is a Ladoga whitefish. Nice fish there. Let's cast this back out. We'll try it again. I was just trying to like get on a slightly different spot. We're still showing we're at 24 meter depth. Cast this out a little farther, I guess. Let this sink down. Almost to the bottom. All right, so this one should be there. And this one's there as well. We're pretty much there. I think I slightly pulled it off the bottom. So the line we expected to have a little better bite rate did get the first fish, although it was like kind of weird because I was doing something where I was moving the boat, trying to get to a slightly different place. Getting us a little closer to on top of the numbers here. There might be a little too much slack in this line. Okay. We have relocated. So that spot was just so slow. It's, I mean, I think we've got the technique down. I think we're doing okay on technique, but though some nice fish have been caught up there in that spot, it's just very slow. We're down here in this spot, which I will remind you kind of where we are here. Just make sure this is already at the bottom still. It should be. So we're at... 15 that's close enough all right so we're down here just right on top of the 14 meter in e7 the 25 up here was just a little slow again like i'm sure there's some really good char coming out there that's what all the reports say but i want to be able to show you this technique and us actually catch some fish so now you see it's kind of working so let's catch a few fish and see how this goes. Nighttime, we'll see Burbot and we'll see Xander, unfortunately. Not that I mind catching Xander, but they are just so strong that um, we're sort of flirting with, uh, with disaster. We hit too big of a Xander. I guess that could be true. of a burbot as well although just the way burbot fight i think we would probably be okay all right so let's let's try this we've already had a couple of fish get on pretty quickly i think we've got both set sides set up let's see how this oh yep there we go again so now you can see how this technique works and what it's like to actually have a reasonable bite rate fishing like this. That's two red char. That is really nice. And as we expect, the side with the smaller leader and smaller hook size is getting the better bite rate. The larger leader and larger hook size still catching fish, but definitely 
getting a slower bite rate. Let me see if I can do something really quick. I think this will be worth worth me setting up like this. Take me a second, but just a little uh, surprise fish over here on Cozy at 54.60. Did I see it wrong? No, nah, I didn't see it wrong. Nice, nice fish there. Because he's had a couple of nice fish here at uh, 5460. Oops. Throughout the exact same line I picked up. Okay. Is that just a common? Yeah, 8.4 common carp. Okay. All right, there you go. There's a little some some surprise footage there. Hopefully we did not uh, miss anything in the meantime. I don't know what is up with copper and all these trophy tench, but they are really coming out at multiple spots, not just one. Oh, look at that quick bite as soon as we put it down. And it looks like this is the only, doesn't look like the other line has a fish. Now let's just hope this is actually a char. If it's a char, it's a pretty nice one. If it's a Xander, it's a very small one. If it's a Burbot, I really don't know. It is a char. Man, the red char really active. I feel like I've heard people say that do that do char fishing a lot more than I do that uh, cloudy days maybe are the best. We do not have a cloudy day, but we do have a day that red char are coming out and black black and Ladoga whitefish also, although Ladoga was at the first spot. All right, we've got a fish on just on the drop. That does happen sometimes, but not as often as it does at Norway, I don't think. But I'm glad this spot has activated a little bit more. I won't do this for super long. Yeah, there's another black white fish just on the drop. Um, but I did want to be able to just show you how to do, go about this. If like me, you're looking for some trophy chars here at, uh, at Archie, this is a pretty good way to go about trying to find them. And uh, maybe we'll find one. Not today, one day soon. I just, you know, I've seen people talking about this kind of fishing. I just hadn't tried it yet. So it was really nice to just get out here and experience it. So now I can kind of keep an eye on it. And when people are reporting that are really biting I kind of at least have an idea of what this is like Ideally, like I don't think you want to wait too long, but you do want to give it a couple seconds because sometimes when it's dropping back down, just on it on its own, that's when you see the fish get on there. Also interesting that we like will have these moments of really quick bite rate and then things will slow down a little bit. Make sure everything's at or near the bottom. Yeah, it's pretty much there.
All right. It's interesting. This left side right now is getting a little bit better. Consistent activity, it seems like. Ooh, this feels like a 7 a.m. Xander to me. I hope I'm wrong, but... Once we got it off the bottom, it's a lot better. But that sort of brick feeling in the beginning, at least, felt like a Xander. Let's see what this is. Nope. A nice char. 2.7 char. Gotta love it. Tell you what I want to do here. I want to go a different size leader on this one. So instead of 60, let's go with um, let's go with 30. It's actually a little bit stronger leader, not by a lot, but by a little bit. But it's a 30 length instead of 60. So now we're gonna do a little bit of variety on the length here. Still the smaller hook over here. Oh, I never dropped the anchor, y'all. So I guess mental note, all that was done without the anchor down. Is it possible that it works better without the anchor down? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't not have been my, um, Now, if that's the case, that's not what I was expecting to be the case. I was under the impression that you don't you do want to have the anchor down. So I'm glad to see that we at least caught a fish pretty quick with the anchor down to help me feel a little better about that. But if you're doing this and if you're not getting bites, I guess you something you could try. Maybe drifting around, letting yourself drift around just a little bit. All right, let's just get one more fish here. It is just not the time hopefully this has been helpful in terms of showing you the technique and you know that time first thing in the morning we actually had a pretty good bite rate we caught a few fish some red char showed up one regular char we didn't find a gray char and overall it's just too slow a bite rate but when i think they're more active i think this is a technique a sort of a style of fishing that i'll really enjoy so I'm going to keep my eye open. Hopefully you will as well. Curious though, those of you who have already done this some, what's the, uh, what's the deal with the anchor? I've, I've really tried it both ways during this recording and I don't, I think it works just as well either way from what I'm seeing, but it's hard to really test it when the bite rate's this slow. So I'm just not sure. 
so yeah let me know in the, in the chat if you've if you've done this a good bit if you typically have the anchor down and uh any other tips that you might give all right as always thanks for watching i'll see you next time